Easy Crew back once again with another live Akai session. Let's just quickly get this together now. Bear with me. Let's see if I get a notification here. Oh, hold on. There we go. Lovely. All right, let's get this going. Um, here we go, 8.49 p.m. There we go, lovely, looking good. Thumbnails looking good. There we are, let's see who's on. All right, Brill. So, let's get started, guys. I'm going to start running this now and uh, do the live. Shout to Alistair. Shout to Domsey, mate. How you doing? How you doing? Back once again with another live video, man. Uh, back on the Akai. For those of you who don't remember... Oh, I think everyone would remember, but for those of you just locked in, um, we're going to carry on doing a bit of sampling today, as as promised, right? So, let me just see what's going on with this GoPro. It's acting a bit weird. Yeah, so, here we go. Shout out to DL. So, here we are. We've got Renoise here. I've got all of the 950, well, a lot of the 950 samples uh, that are set up here uh, that I've already extracted from the disc and now i'm going to be putting them back into the sampler and so that i can organize these into packs um and potentially put them on the samploids website as well um so without further ado let's get into it um i've got the akai s950 set up over here that's on the on the gopro and again i'm going to do some more sampling just get a few more breaks out of the way. Once I get the breaks out of the way, I'm going to be sort of tightening them up and, and doing that sort of thing. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this break here, as you can see, uh, this is a classic 950 Akai break. I call that the Puma break, right? So what I'm going to do with this now, I'm just going to get this break here. And I'm going to time it up a bit, I think, as well, to make life a bit easier, like I said. Same procedure as yesterday, really. Um, maybe we'll sort of, before we wrap up today, we'll do a couple of other little bits and pieces as well. Um, just for those who want to know, shout to Ancient Tech Junglist, mate. Good to see ya. So let's have a go at looping this up. And do the start points on it. For those of you who want to see how to do the start points, look at me, what am I doing? I'm, I'm on the wrong page. For those of you who want to see the start points um, in action and have a, a breakdown of it, um, I did explain that in yesterday's video. And as you can see here, there's a couple of little clicks. Tighten those up. And let's give this a little edit. Program that up, set the BPM to 158, and then, yeah, lovely. Put some keys in, so D after D sharp, let's have a look, D, we've got D sharp E, and then a couple more keys on that. Okay, so this one sounds all right. So this, <laughs> excuse me. All right, so let me just add another little high hat in there from this. I think we should put... Yeah, that's not bad. Let's just have a look at the second part of that snare there. Um, I just want to check something. On this one, what have we got? Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty much it then. All right, so let's have a look, see if that's normalized. Yes, it's normalized. Right, so now we're going to go over to the sampler. Let's just sample that. We set the BPM at 158. I'm going to go over to the sampler. I'm going to give it a name. I'll call that the Puma Break. P U M A P U M A. Guys, if you've got any questions, just stick it in the chat box. And uh, I'll do my best to answer it for you. B R K B R Q A R K. Right, there we go. Hope everyone had a good day today. I'm gonna set this to twelve 
hurts as usual and then um, set the sample time let's see what sort of sample time we got here so how long is this break let's have a look it's about two and a half seconds so it's at 2.5 over over there on the sampler 2.5 shout out to dj method mate how you doing yeah yeah definitely got that drop in science sound in it See, that would be a good little tutorial, isn't it? It's like listen to certain tunes and try and recreate the elements from those tunes. That would be a cool thing. Um, yeah, give me a yush in the chat box if you think that's a cool um, idea for some tutorials. So I'm going to set the levels here. So as you see, I've gone to the, the record menu, setting the levels up, um, make my threshold on the, on the actual record a little bit lower. Right, now I'm going to turn the mic off. I've got to turn the microphone off. So let me go to here. And let me just go to the console here. And then I'm going to turn the microphone off. So you don't hear the mic on the sample. Because nobody wants to hear a mic on the sample. So the mic's going to go off for a couple of seconds, right? And then I'm going to um, go from there, right? So let's go. So mute. So let's hit the mute button there. Right, peeps, that was a bit of a mad one, but yeah, I got it done in the end. So there you go. So I've just sampled it. We're back in this menu now. So I'm going to go to edit sample now, and I'm going to go to the Puma break. We've got the crunchy Apache in there. So I'm working on disc three of this uh, set now. And then I'm going to go to the end point. Oh, I've got to turn the mixer on. Bear with me a second, guys. I'm looking for um, a, a good headset mic. Does anyone know of a good headset mic out there worth uh, recommend, you know, worth me buying or what? Uh, let's see what we got here. DJ Method. Yeah. Okay, cool. Lovely. I'm just, just going to move the end point so that it's not got too much sort of um, overhang on the sample there you go so that'll do and then I'm gonna go to menu 10 discard before end and start there you go that's done right back to here now get the next sample going and back in again ah here we go do you think you and Equinox can reform a new circa 94 era style of jungle darkness with 8 to 12 bit for today's consoles I can't imagine the magnitude of power you guys can create now with all the experience well I mean we're kind of doing that at the moment really I mean not as a collab but I know Marlon's got his scientific wax and I'm still doing a lot of the, uh, brain nostalgia stuff and you know um, making new tunes as well um, okay, so H Bro says, "What tracker program are you using? It looks a little like Mod Plug. Yeah, it is, but this for me is way better than Mod Plug. Plug. It. This is uh, called Renoise. It's a very, very good uh, bit of kit, really. Um, highly recommended. Um, you go check it out, and uh, it's got a lot more features. I think Mod Plug doesn't use VSTs. Correct me if I'm wrong." Nice bit of aim in there. Let me just uh, hit Apple and P to normalize. That's a nice piece of EQ compressed aim in. So let's get this going. Uh, let's see. All right, let's just trim that up. Trim the start of that up, man. 
There we go. Yeah, quite excuse me tonight, guys. It's been a bit of a long day, so I'm going to do a short one. Keep it short and sweet. But still just checking in with the crew. Let's get that tight. 158 business. Mute that up. Oh, look at that. It's spot on. So that's ready for sampling. Let's go over to the old sampler. Bosh. I'm going to call that one. D. Amen. D. Amen. A. M. E. E. N. Break. B of K. B of K. Who's enjoying the snow and the cold out there tonight? It's freezing, man. Anyone doing anything, you know, got any tips for keeping the house warm? Lovely. All right, so I'm going to sample that again. Mic off. Here we go. Where is my console? Okay, it goes. Right, peeps, that's done again. Good to go. What have we got here? So, man, that's coming out super loud when it's sampled. It sounds really good as well. Right, so let's go go to the end point. Wow, man! So DJ Method, you're from Torquay. Is that is that down near Cornwall side? He said, uh, these days, so no snow here on the bay. Or is that another country where it's hot? Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so go to the end again, discard sample. This is doing all right, isn't it? Wicked. All right, that one's done. We're nearly there, we're nearly there. All right, let's get this next one done. So there's lots of edits on there, but I'm not going to bother sample them all individually. As, actually, you know what? I might, you know, I might just do that. Let me just hear if it's the same speed. Yeah, I'm going to sample it because it is the same speed, actually. Let me just normalize it all. It's a nice amen, you know, no joking about Right, so let's sample that piece there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to um, the sampler again, and I'm going to just put that as number two. Because definitely the way that's cut there, it's ready to go, man. I'm telling you. Right, let me switch this mic off for a second, guys. I'm going to do some sampling here. Hey, shout to Mr. Anchovy. How are you doing, bruv? Shout to Dreadlock Holmes. Soundforge, yeah, mate. I haven't heard of Soundforge for ages, mate. How you doing, T? Uh, big up to Jason. Big up to Made It, man. From Made It, very hot South Africa. Wow, man. Nice. Seems a bit weird, like, for me to have heat at this time of year because we went to uh, Trinidad like a few years back and um, the heat was just mad. Having sunshine for Christmas seemed really odd. All right, let's go back to here now, and I'm going to sample this now. I'm just going to mute the mic a sec, guys, and we'll do a quick, quick load of sampling again, yeah?
Right, I've got to sort this mic out, man, so it doesn't root into the sample because it's a bit awkward sampling all that muted and you're just hearing all these like breaks just going off and I'm not explaining much about what's going on. So just catching up. So what I just did there, shout to Roughneck, six, uh, shout to Roughneck. Uh, I swear you had Roughneck 69 on the end of your name there. Yeah, Dom's, I couldn't talk because when I talk, right, it samples my voice. So I don't want to, I don't want to sample my voice and um, also sample the sound because it will sound weird. So it's either I'm going to have to find a way to reroute the mic so that the mic doesn't go um, maybe into the uh, sampler. But that's a, that's another long thing, man. But yeah, that's why. Anyway, so I've, what I just did there explaining, I've just sampled all of the unique hits on the Amen, right? Because I've that's a pre-cut Amen that's come out of the sample. So that will be nice. <laughs> So put in a program and just have it rinsing out. Right, there's a big gap at the start of that. Let me just edit that. So I'm going to move down to um, ed to uh, to menu button number six. Uh, might as well use it auto, auto start point. Right, that's a bit better. Let me go a bit tighter than that. Keep moving. So, right, I won't overdo it. And then I'll just truncate start and end. Yeah. Discard after. Let's just try and tighten that down a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is move the end point down till it sort of just clips off the end. Yep, yeah, there we go. Right, a little bit more. There we go. Right, scroll that down, clip the end off. Lovely. That's coming along real nice. Right. So we're, we're at the end of this um, S950 library here. I call that the Jungle Annihilation Kit. Apache. Puma. And uh, that break. If there's anything you want me to demonstrate on maybe uh, Renoise or something, or even sort of tightening up this sampler here, let me know. Um, cause I'm going to just maybe get onto the sampler now, maybe loop up some of these breaks, um, and maybe put together a key group, which would be pretty cool to go with this pack, which I think will be wicked, man. Um, but let me just have a quick little look, see what else we've got. We've got jungle remix pack, right? What's this? Jungle. Mm. Okay. Nah. I've already got all that in there already, so that pack sorted. Uh, King De King Beat Dirt, what's this? Killer Soundboy pack. Jungle Sound Clash pack. I think this is samples. Oh. Oh yeah, some nice drums. I'm gonna do some drum kits anyway, individual drum kits for this anyway. I think I'll leave that for now. I'm gonna come back to that. Nice break that one. Ah, got time for some time stretching. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Ooh. See, on here, you've... Oh, no, I'm not showing you the page. On here, right, we've got... See how the wave is a little bit mashed up? That's what happens when you get a corrupt floppy drive and then you archive the... You know, manage to salvage the sound from the floppy. Um, what happens is you get these little glitches on there, and you could you could you could fix those um, in Adobe Audition. Um, Dreadlock Holmes, man, you're saying about SoundForge, but uh, I think nowadays it's all about the Adobe Audition. Not all about it, but like that's kind of like the max version of it. See, look, if you zoom in, you can see all that crap there. Now, normally that's just additional crap that you don't need. See that? You could just delete it. And then that should fix the sample. Yeah. Good as new, mate. But I'm thinking this sample here, let's just normalize it first so we know we've done it. I'm thinking this sample. Is it? Anchovy user Audacity. I've, I know about that program. I've actually got that on my PC. But... Uh, I've used it a couple of times for just final recordings. You know when I've got the whole mixer running and I, I kind of use all, like 
audacity as um a dat machine on my kind of live streaming pc and that, that that's all right as well right let me just try and rearrange this break as well because what i want to do is i need to see if i could just cut that and then paste it here let me see if it'll let me yeah all right so now that's sort of playing the right way around because i wanted yeah so let me just chop that up and see what i can do but the only thing is with this break right it's got like a kick drum all the way through it so i figure it might sound a bit funny when you chop it up but let's give it a go let's see what we got so let's switch that one off and then oops go along here pop that in let's try and tighten that up i think this is good brake tightening practice anyway right can you hear that clip on the end of that when i press that yeah, come back here right we want to get rid of that see zoom in look there's a little blib there just bring it back a bit oh yeah it's, see that zero cross in there see that there we go let's try that thing what um what we was uh, messing about with yesterday. Let's see if that zero crossing snap thing works. Mm, it didn't work that time. Perhaps there's another way of doing it. All right, so we just all I'm doing now is I'm just playing all the clips and making sure they've got no pops on the end. Shout to Connor M M S M M S G, you know, Connor. Connor Miggs, Connor Miggs, big up, mate. How you doing, bruv? Hope, so, hope everything is good. Yeah, there's a little clip on the end of that. And I chop that off there. Lovely. Kill that. Right, that's what I'm interested in. You see this little shuff, shuffle? Get with that pop. There you go. Right. All right, so let's see what we got here. So now, let's see if we can make a pattern out of this. Yeah, it's still sounding all right. Ooh. It's got to be there. All right. Mm. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do, because there's a little shuffle in there. Yeah, this is the bit I'm interested in. That's a double piece there. Look, you've got a little bit. Yeah. That's a little shuffle there. That could work, but it's got a little boop. Can you hear that little bass note on it? Shout out to flip mode, mate. How you doing? Perhaps in that shuffle, a prolonged shuffle within the shuffle itself, giving it duration. Yeah, I'll show you how you could do that, yeah? There's a little tr technique you could use to do that. So if I got that shuffle there, if I wanted to make that sound longer, you just go down to where it says loop here and then just go ping pong. I'll give you a few seconds before it sounds weird. Right, so let's get a little shuffle in there. Right, so we want a little shuffle in here. Turn the edit on. Yeah, so we want the shuffles on the offbeat and the highs on the onbeat, if you know what I mean. There you go, it's got it there, right? And then another hat there. Let's put another shuffle there. Easy bazooka! <laughs> and bazooka says, hello lunatics. I was watching some Sherlock Holmes. So I'm a bit late for Akai class. Big up to all crew, mate. Big up to you, mate. How's it going?
Right, let's see how that snare sounds if I if I get rid of this piece here. Nah, all right. Let's see if we can get this, see what that little hi-hat thing sounds like on the um, B5. Uh, let's see, C, oops, sorry. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. That's what we want. See, the thing is, it's got two lots of um, bass notes under that. Let's try and EQ it a bit. Let's try and get these, these two on a different channel. So I'm going to get that, put that here. And then I'm going to get me Pro Q. So let's have a look. Uh, let's use the Pro Q. Yeah, let's just cut that. Just cut the low end off of that shuffle, man, like so, and bring it back. We don't want no high end on it. Right, now I want to see something if we put this over here. Let's put the shuffles with the, with the EQ locked off. It sounds a bit staggery, but it's cool. The thing is, is we've got that low end in there, man. And that's kind of like really sort of limiting what we can do, really. Hey, shout to Spider. How you doing, mate? I'm sorting out your, your, uh, your, your vinyl today that you ordered, man. It's going out tomorrow, mate. Big up, mate. Big up. Shout to Jason. I think I'm going to leave that like that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it as it was because that one because it's got that low end in there. There's no point going in that and messing about too much. That sounds better. I like that. Yeah. All right. So let's sample that then. So we're gonna call that we'll call that break Puma two. Yeah. So let's go over to the sampler. Call that one Puma two. So let's. Uh, yeah. I think programming the breaks makes it a bit more interesting as well. Rather than just like kind of having the same old, just get them tight one time. So we'll call that Puma 2. P U U M A. Has anyone messed about the time stretch tool in Renoise? You know, do you know Renoise has actually got an Akizer built into it? Puma. Um, Puma break space break. Let me just put space there, make life easier. Right, how many seconds do we need for that? Two seconds, probably, at best. Let's have a look. Let's see what we got. So, yeah, that'll do. Right, so I'm going to turn the mic off again, guys. You know the drill. And then uh, let's get that going. So pop that there. And we're building up the old library in live direco time. All right, let's have a look. So open up. Shout out to Joe's music, mate. Right, gonna do the sampling real quick. Right, that's done. Man, that is cool, man. I like this break. Now, let me see if I can do a phrase out of this. Change this into a permanent break, because I actually like that. Even to use within Renoise. No, it won't let me. So that, the only way I can do that is, to be fair, I think what I'm gonna have to do is just put this here. And then, yeah, and then just make a phrase out of that, I guess. In fact, no, do you know what? I'm gonna render it to sample, because I just like the way it sounds there. So let me just render that to sample, so it's a print as it is. So now I've got that break. Normalize it a bit more. That's sounding wicked, man. And then I'm gonna then let me save it, right, as a break. Call that Puma 2 in my breaks folder. I like to keep all my samples like proper organized, peeps, as much as I can. Because otherwise, I remember one day, like, I sat there 
for hours and just sorted out my library so that I know where stuff is because there's nothing worse than looking for something and you can't find it or you've started creating something and you, you can't remember where it was. At least you've got stuff to flip through. So this is Puma 2. I'll put that like that. Break. B-R-K. So this is a brand new Puma. And I'm going to turn it into a phrase as well, guys, so that um, I can use it anytime. Uh, let's have a look. So let's let's go back again. I'm going to turn that snap zero crossing on. Let me see what happens. Do you know what? There's still a little bit of click there. I thought that would get rid of the click totally. Right, so now let's get these. Let's do these shuffles. Right now. Right now, I'm going to create, create a phrase with this now. And hopefully this is going to do it. Slices, um, render slices to phrase. Right, let's have a listen. You know what? I thought there was something suspect about the way that break ended, you know, to be honest. No, undo that phrase. That phrase has got something wrong. It's like it's got, it's got too many lines or something. Let me just see something. One sec. Delete that. I just want to see how many lines it's got. So that's, uh, yeah, it's supposed to loop there, man. Right, so I'm going to pay attention to the amount of lines here. So it says zero F. So do that again. Render slice to, render to phrase. Render slices to, uh, to phrase. So where are we? Render selection, sorry. What I was doing. Ah, create phrase from selection. Yeah, sorry. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah, of course. No, no, no. We're on slices, isn't it? Mine's getting tired out here. Right. Okay, here we go. So, what we got? Render slices to phrase. Right. Zero F, we said, isn't it? I think there's just too much. Look, you can see it. Can you see how many lines per beat there is? It's like it's all even up to this point. So we're going to have to chop that whole pattern down. And then I'm not sure how many lines are in between. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. So that's a seventh, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six. That might work. Let's see. There you go. Right, so here we go. we've got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bosh. One, two, three. What am I doing, man? It doesn't, doesn't even make any sense. Look at look at the pattern. It's all different. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that. Let me just save that. So again, save sample instrument puma break and then just put phrase next to it i'll come back to that later p h r a s e let's see how that looks all right bosh that's done should be correct zero is f zero to but zero to f is 16. hmm yeah let's put that up against that amen and see if it's tight let's have a look Yeah, it could be a bit weird there, you know. Watch this. Let me see something. Yeah, that's all right. And what about this one now? Whoa, that's just mash up. Mashed up, man. Okay, get rid of that phrase. It's a poor example. We're going to need to figure this out. Troubleshooting live. That's what I like. So let's go for it. So. You know what? I think I've done wrong here. I think I need to loop this sample before we actually create a phrase out of it. So let's go. Let's go back to the loop. You see that little bit? You see that on the end there? That little, that little excess? I think that's what's causing our problem. Straight out of Compton mate let's have a listen forward loop yeah put it put the loop to forward there you go 
that's our problem right there so this long excess cavity at the end here don't even ask me how it got there but that needs to go so let's go to the very 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 beginning and the end of this gap and let's do it real tight so you could zoom in with the mouse get rid of this uh, zero ah it might be that yeah cheeky zero crossing causing bugs right right so that's the thing that I've not done. And then just right click and then press cut. Now make a phrase out of that. Right. And I'm 100% sure now if you make the phrase from this, it's going to be on point. Which means that we got to resample it. So go slices, create phrase, render slice of phrase, bosh. Now listen. Oh. Right, let's see how that pans out next to that amen now. Right, I want to see something. It's still a bit loose, man. It's still a bit loose. Why? All right. Okay, well then, in that case, what's this? Because look, if you look at kind of everything sort of distance wise from here to here, from here to here. And then from here to here is a bit long. I've got a feeling that that is not needed. Right. Let's just see something, guys. I'm going to go back to here. Let me get rid of that phrase. Delete the phrase. Try again. Yeah, there's a little there's a little key. Can you guys see that little, that little stagger over the end of it? Yeah. So like when you play it, look, it's, it's trying to catch up on itself. So that means that this little blib here on the screen is causing it not to be tight. You see that? Whatever that is, we don't need it. Get rid of that and everything will look mathematically correct size wise. Do you know what I mean? So it's still out a bit. So that little gap. So let's right click again. Let's process, slice, render to phrase. Because you can get it tight, man. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Now put that here. Watch. Give and take the amens, probably a bit loose. But yeah, that's all good. If I put the metronome on and have a listen to it, let's see. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Let's go with that. Right. Let's see what that sounds like with a bit of compression on it now. Let's be silly now. Let's go for a bit of compression on that and see what it sounds like. So Fab C. Let's use the Fab C, right? Uh, mono, because we're running mono sound. Let's see what it sounds like. I think that takes a bit of transient off it. I think because I already think that that breaks pretty much compressed anyway. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go back to the sampler and I'm gonna sample it. We'll get to all that later, right? So put that in there. Turn the mic off. Resample him, right? So let's just make sure. Let me just press record again. Yeah, it's pre puma break. And let's go all the way down there, and then let's hit that. And let's do that. Now let's go to the. Uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the mic. Turn the mic off. Right. That's what you get for doing this after a long day's work. Right. Mic off. I'm going to get myself one of them lapel mics, man, and wire it in differently. Hopefully we can get that working nice. Right. So mute. Right, job done. Sounding good. Right, so we got that one. Yeah. Now we got that. Now it's time to go for a little save. Let's go for a little save. Where's the Puma break? Right. Lovely. Right, so now what I'm going to do, again, we demonstrated this yesterday. So 
I'm just going to kind of give you a brief talk. If you want to go back on yesterday's video, you can see how we like done it. But like, yeah, so now on my HXC emulator here, I've got a blank floppy disk image, right? So we're not actually saving to floppy. We're saving to disk image, yeah? And I'm going to go on to here now and I'm going to locate my 950 assault brakes, right? And then I'm going to just select disk number three, which I believe I'm working on. 950 disk three. Now I'm just going to double check because I don't want to save over nothing, right? So that's not disk three. Yeah, it's scrolling. You can see it there. And I'm just going to go to disk and I'm going to go to load just so I can see the sample on here. No, there's no samples on that whatsoever. So that looks like it's empty. I've got Puma breaking here. I've got Crunchy Apache from yesterday, which I loaded up. And I've got all the DA memes, yeah? So let me just see that Crunchy. There's that Crunchy Apache. I'm, I'm going to basically put that there. And I'm going to go clear volume and save. Hit that, and then that should save to the floppy drive. All nice and safe. All locked off. And then once that's all saved, then we can carry on to the next uh, thing to sample, guys. We said we were going to do some time stretching. I know that's a that's kind of um, I've definitely got a plan to do that, but uh, I've got I would do like to show something new every time you know we go live. But if you're enjoying the the, the live stream so far tonight, guys, please hit that like button. I'll definitely come on and do more if I get enough likes and stuff and we do this uh, continuously. Just hit that like button. Let us know what's going on. Leave a comment down below if you're just watching like the playback. And it'd be nice to hear what people think of these, uh, you know, Akai tutorials. Uh, as you can see, it's taking a bit of time to save because it's actually emulating a floppy um, disk. Right, so that's done now. It's saved on that disk now. So let's get back to what we've got in Renoise now, and um, let's uh, let's see what we're going to sample next. What we're going to go through. Let's fight, see what else we got. No, not that. Not that. Ah, what's this? Ah, that's pretty cool. That would make a nice thing to put in a sampler. A little cut up, amen. Shout to oh, shout to Alkenstein. Big up, busy. I'm wondering if you try Bitwig Studio. I was watching Zinc using Bitwig during this his lockdown Twitch streams. No, I haven't seen. I've heard of Bitwig. Is that is that like a free DAO? I don't even know, man. I don't even know Whoop, what that was like, man. Well, what do you think of it? Is it is it good? What is it? Is it like a Cubase style DAO thing? All right, let's see. Ah, okay. So let me just normalize all that. Apple P. Nice. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to DAOs, man, it's what you get on with, you know. It's like what you feel you could learn easier or what you like working on. For me, I think all these DAOs have their uses, but... I would have, me personally, if I could afford them all, I'd probably check them all out. They all, all had demos, but when it comes to computer, how much stuff can you install on there before it starts bugging out? Do you know what I mean? So this works for me. Cubase is a nice piece of kit for audio and stuff. And that's kind of logic for me as well. I was using, using logic for a lot of, when I was engineering a lot of UK garage stuff, when I had my recording studio, I was using logic. And logic for me, every every DAO has its own uses and applications depending on what you're doing. So, for example, for music creation, jungle style, twists up, amen, renoise for me, that's the workflow. The workflow works for me much better than anything on renoise. If I'm working with a lot of audio and I'm doing a lot of arrangement work then maybe cubase would be the one you know if you say like for example you could make a 
you can make a track here like a block with all your stuff laid out in a row right and without an arrangement then just bounce them to audio and then you could put them into cubase as individual tracks which which is really really cool way of working i've done a lot of the early science ep not the first one but the planet mu science ep um i did that on um on renoise and cubase right those little 10 inch discs that came out on planet mu shout out to just um to systems man big up mate um and what i used to do is i used to get everything running like a bass line a sound a couple of bits all laid out here right and we could do that on the tutorial as well and uh then once i had it all running and i would mute certain tracks and then do other bits and experiment and then i would bounce them all out into files because on when you go to render here or say for example on cubase i mean cubase you can save each track to a separate file like that and then you've also got here on here you've also got use automatic labeling so if you label all your tracks properly like up here so for example amen you know apache bass vocal whatever so on and so forth yeah shout to the library and shout to h a, a bro good to see you in the chat box um then when you go to render now all the tracks will be labeled you can have them all auto named and then you export them all remember your bpm and then you can import them into cubase and then there'll be all audio tracks just mapped out like that like you know in one block and then you could just mute what you want manipulate the audio make an arrangement play stuff over it and it's pretty lit man you, that's how i did like you know the, um, that tune fire when you feel the bass line give me some fire that tune there all them all them edits and a lot of those stretches and shit they were all done in cubase at the time and the i'll show you i'll call that let me see if i can find it if i can actually find that let's see if i've got because i think somewhere here i've actually got the fire arrangement uh let me see is it here i'll tell you what my files are all over the gaff man yeah okay it's not in here i'll have to dig that one out man i swear i had that fire uh i'll have to dig that out and show you how that all works if i could find it let me see no it, it would have found it if it was here it's probably another drive somewhere fire nah nah anyway yeah so I, that's how i did that anyway that is that is the the idea behind it again back to the dow talk um logic pro logic pro is professional you know what i'm saying not, i'm not saying all the other dials are not professional but we use logic pro in the studio it started off on a pc then i think it was emagic made the logic and then mac bought them out and then became logic pro and logic was even the go-to on the pc when he's recording the studio what i used to like about logic is the grooves like and for those of you who don't know what a groove is in a DAO, it's like, say, for example, when you play an instrument, like, say, for example, right, I'm going to give you an example of a groove, right? So I'm going to get the piano on. Not the piano, but the... Hold on. Bloody got to get to my power cable behind here. Hold on. Uh, where's my power switch? Right, yeah, got that on there. Right, okay, so I've got the keyboard on. Right, so let's say, for example... Um, let me call up something. Uh, let's go to say complete. So I can go to be plugins. Go to complete. What the hell is this? Right, you want VSTs, man? What's happening? Uh, not patch. Uh, plugin. There you go. Right. Sorry. Excuse me, folks. Right. So let's go to say um, complete. Complete control. So grooves, yeah. So we're talking grooves. So click on the old complete control, load that up. Now, again, not side tracking, but has anyone used complete? Complete's a pretty sick bit of setup, man. For what it's worth, you get so much freaking plugins, and there's just so much stuff incomplete. It's it's absolutely mad. Look, you get all this gear here. You get drums. You get flipping drum labs. 
you get freaking strings, you get sounds, you get, oh my days, it's just stupid simps. And then you just click. Say, for example, it's a piano. Let me just get a piano up real quick. Let me just give you an example. I've got loads of wires in front of the piano at the moment. Because uh, I've, I've been unprepared as usual. But let me just give you a little... Right. So everyone can hear that, yeah? So say like a groove, yeah? If I was to go like... And it's got that kind of piano plonk feel to it. If I was to do that, yeah, say, for example, um, in an actual, uh, in a DAO, if I played that into Cubase, chances are, if I was doing like a groove that went, like, say, and it had that kind of staggered feel to it, yeah, what you'll find, yeah, is with that staggered feel, yeah, the, the DAO won't be able to understand the groove and it will quantize it in a mad way, which is kind of like really annoying. But when it comes down to logic, anything you play, if you're working with a pianist and you, you want to get that kind of groove, the quantize kind of understands because you've got quantize A, B, C and D. And like quantize A would be bang on B. Quantize B would be slightly off B and so on and so forth, but it tends to just know exactly where you play. So you were, you went... It would know to quantize it, and it, when you play it back after quantizing, it would sound it tight in the groove that you played it in, if that makes sense. Give me a yay in the chat box if you get what I'm saying. So Logic has a much better groove quantize than Cubase. I have never got on with the Cubase Groove quantize. Cubase groove quantize would be something more like this. And it wouldn't, it would just wouldn't get, it wouldn't get that in groove, you know what I mean? You'd be sitting there, you'd be flipping, trying to work out a damn formula for it. And it's madness. Humanize. Yeah, and all that stuff there. Yeah. So that is why logic for me is better, it's better on MIDI. You can chop up aiming on it, but the audio in Logic, that's, it's all right, but it lacks a lot of functions. I don't know about now, but when I was using Logic Pro, it lacked a lot of functions. I know he's gonna say that T, but <laughs> T's like, Cubase is shite. But I know, I know that's your go-to, but you see what's happening with Cubase now, well, I'll tell you what he say that says that and like we're kind of back to that Cubase buggy thing because Cubase right when it got to Cubase in from the Cubase five days people were getting pissed off with Steinberg and its bugs because Cubase used to crash like every two minutes every 10 minutes keep saving oh shit restart the computer oh shit it's... so Cubase had a ton of problems, right? You open a plugin, it crash. People say, oh yeah, 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 get all your plugins legit. Get all your plugins legit. T, T is a legit plugin, man. He, he buys all his plugins legit. He buys his Cubase legit. His, Q, his computer's clean, right? But yet now, his Cubase is doing things like, when he goes to save his song, it'll save a song, Right, and say like sometimes when you're working on a song and you want to do a slight change and you think, shit, I don't want to mess up this arrangement. So I'm going to call this one part two. It'll save part two, work on part two and have to save a part three to be able to go back to part two. Because if he goes to load part two after just saving part two, after he closes down Cubase and opens it back up, boom, part two's nothing. There's nothing now. So, and he's had a lot of crashes. And me personally as well, that's another reason why I don't like Cubase for certain applications. Don't get me wrong. I like Cubase for audio. When it works, Cubase is, to me, is kind of like, boy, Pro Tools business for a reasonable price. Because old Pro Tools, that used to be freaking bucks, man. Pro Tools used to be 30K back in the day if you needed a Pro Tools setup. So the only people who had Pro Tools were people who made it in the pop charts and, you know, they got a big, big fat check from the pop charts and 
they said, right, yeah, yeah, I've got loads of money. I'm going to build my studio. I'm going to build Pro Tools. I'm going to buy this and I'm going to turn it into a flipping Star Trek instead of a studio. And they, they have the cleanest sound. I remember meeting the guy who made that tune, Chocolate Boy. I forgot the name now. But uh, you know that Sweet Like Chocolate? Sweet Like Chocolate Boy. That tune there, right? And he was working with a man like DJ Luck. Shout out to Joel, yeah? And he brought this freaking mix down, yeah, that he did in his studio. Shanks and Bigfoot. There you go. Three, cheers, Charlie. <laughs> right? And he came in with a mix that he did. And he goes, yeah, well, I've got Pro Tools, mate. And he had the Pro Tools, yeah, mix of... Uh, his tune that he brought to play for DJ Luck in the studio. And guys, he played me this mix and it was probably one of the cleanest mixes I've heard in donkeys in the UK garage. You know what I mean? We we get used to get good sound and all that, but don't get me wrong. My man had pro tools and it was just like next level, obviously digital to audio converters and that. But I'll say that. Yeah. But funny enough, I was chatting to Sirim over Insta and, uh, cause he's done a mix of, um, there it ain't no way on Joker. He, he hit me up. He'd done a mix of that. And it sounds good, man. And again, it sounds clean. And he goes up. Uh, he said he's using a load of RMEs, right? Now, I was thinking, rah, man. I was actually quite surprised. But he said a load of RMEs. So he's probably got something cool going on over there, which I've not seen, right? And then, right? And then, right? Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to get to the point in a minute. And then... I remember people telling me, man, like, um, what's his name? Breakage, right? Some time ago, in the days of the Sound Blaster Live, Sound Bla you know, Creative Sound Blaster Live, he was getting some bad boy mix downs and his tunes were sounding fat, right? And uh, I say, oh, man, this sounds wicked. What's he mixing down on? Oh, Breakage. Oh, he's got Sound Blaster Live. What? Sound Blaster Live, those days there, we were using the audio file 2496, which to be honest, compact, compared to like a RME UCX interface or an Apollo flipping UAD quad is toys. You know what I mean? So the, the, the um, Creative Live, Sound Blaster Creative Live, I was actually shocked. And really and truly, you can only go so far with the cheaper end sound cards, but at the same time, you know what the secret's in? The secret's in your ears and your monitors and how well your headphones are, perhaps, if you're mixing on your headphones, how well your room is treated. All these things make a big difference. Yeah, ASIO drivers too. So, you know, there you go. Anyway, that's my point. So, let's do a bit more sampling, guys. And, uh... I kind of like went on a mission there. Let me just see what else needs to be done. Uh, let me just close down this complete control. We can check out some plugins on a later date. If you've got any com if you've got any ideas and suggestions you'd like to see for the next video, right? Do me a favor, guys. Leave a comment, not in the chat box. Do it on the video itself down below. So we got a little bit of a note to selfie, and maybe we could try. You know, you could say, "How do we do that?" or how did I do that in this tune? Or how did I get that sound? Or how does he do that? Or how does he program that? Let's try and figure out, you know, what uh, what you guys want to see next. So I'm going to go back to my 950. And I'm going to flip through quickly. See if there's any more drums that I can do. Most of these look like they've done quite well. Uh, dark, what time is it now? Oh, it's coming up to 10. So maybe another 10 minutes, guys. Um, and um, we're going to maybe lock it down um yes yeah, yeah big up to alkenstein man big up to all the crew let's have a look uh, what else we got here darkness dark is pack. let's see what that is crown assault apache phrase cube i know what a lot of these are dark old school bass synth uh, let's see no the man mix up what's that d man mix it up oh i know what that is it's a break which we've already done E, e B assault pack. What's this? Oh, I think I've deleted something there. Oh, soul pride. 
Yeah, you know we got to put that in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Let's do the Soul Pride. San Francisco. Wow, man. No plans to travel at the moment, man. Just uh, just in the, in the cave, mate. That's it for now. Um, but you never know. Let's have a look. Uh, okay. Shout out to Asdi. Yeah, man. We got the Soul Pride. We got the Soul Pride. Normalize that. Let's see what we got. Right. Let's do a little bit of zero crossing. Stamp zero crossing. Turn that on. Let's put the slices on. Let's see how that works for us. Bosh. Yeah, it's still a few little pops there. You can see it. Zoom in. Get rid of that pop. Let's clean up this Soul Pride, man. Because I like to hear people coming with... I'm going to turn the snap off, by the way, on this point. I like to hear people like making tighter beats. So I think it's e it's nice to put tutorials out there. So people got some sort of, you know, guidance. Because I think it makes a big difference when your beats are tight, man. Hey right, Bazooka, did you did you talk to Daddy Freddy about that special? No pressure. Nice little shuffle there. Right, so let's chop this off here because this is the end of the break, right? Because remember what we did earlier. We have to get that looped perfectly before we could actually do anything else now i've got a feeling that that's where it is at right so um uh, uh oh i thought you was in contact with him my bad man no problem no problem no stress no stress yeah look there we go right right click render slice to phrase let's go Yeah, we have it. Right, I'm going to sample that because you know this drum set would be it would need would, would be that would be a, that would be icing on the cake. Right, so I'm going to hit that there. Let me go over to the sampler. Soul Pride. There we go. Soul P Q R S S O. You see how long this takes, man. It's no joke. U L Soul Pride P R I D E P R P Q R I D E mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll probably say a free second. All right, let's go for it. Gonna mute the mic again. Ooh, nice. All right, let's just turn it off a second. Sometimes, right, you could just be doing this, sitting there doodling, tightening up brakes. And um, you could just hear a break that sets you off onto a tune. I'm gonna show you a break that I did the I messed about with the other day and I ended up with a drum kit. Remind me that in a minute. Let me just sample this. And then I'll show you that to go, yeah? All right, so mute the, mute the, um, the mic now. Let's go for it. I'm going to find a way to do this easier with the routine. Right, so mic off and sample. Right, that's all done, guys. Back to the Dow. I've done that. Actually, let me just uh, just trim off the end of that a minute. I'm not sure how much space we got left on this disc now. 
but we must be getting there now. I'm going to keep the end of the foot drum there, just so we got it. Right, let's go for a quick save again, mm. guys. I could just save the individual samples, but I'm just going to save again over this whole thing. So clear volume and save. When I'm done with this disc, right, I'm going to put it up on the Samploids website as uh, Akai S950 format and also include the waves of, as I did on that previous pack that I uploaded. Right, so, so the part one. So this is going to be the part two. Let me save that. This one looks like it's running into three discs now, guys. Save that. Right, so that's all saving. So we're back here. Right. Note to selfie. What was it again? Anybody remember what the note to selfie was? I forgot now. I knew I'd forget, man. Spider says, I can say a big amen to that. My headphone setups have knocked me out of a few dp battle dpw battles <laughs> yeah mate break yeah that's it yeah yeah yeah. break thanks mate yeah 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 that's the one right so check it so this is this is it right so i'm going to show you where that came from this one let me just load that up a minute so get out of there a minute go back to here break machine Right, so this check this break break out, right? This is a pretty cool break. So what this is 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 a break that's been EQ'd. Now let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I think it's this one. No. This one. Now check this. Let's have a listen to this. So that's from the mule. But edited in the in another break, sounding a little bit quiet now. So I'm going to put that and just beef it up. I'm going to beef this up now. Let me just put a few little bits on it. So let's group all these together. All right. So I'm going to make a group track. Right click, insert group. Now, for those who don't know what a group track is, it's where you can put a number of tracks together and process them all together. So check this now. Right. So this is a group. So I took the mule and then copied the kind of little shuffles on here. I'm going to break it down what I did. Uh, I've done an EQ on the shuffles here. Right, so let me just turn off the EQ so you can hear the difference. Can you hear all that rumble in the background? Right now, I'm going to group them all together, and then I'm going to EQ, turn the EQ on on the shuffle so you can hear it. Let's put a, like a, a little compressor on here. All right, um, put a bit of compression on there. Bang that in there. Put the auto on. Neat, hard, neat. Right, chuck that there like that for a second. Let's have a look. Now, listen to that break, right? You can hear that do 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 on this shuffle. Listen to the shuffle. Now, with that EQ on it, listen to the difference. With that EQ. Now, I'm going to give you a little switch in between the EQs now. Check this out. Look, before and after, listen to the difference. And that's just EQ in the shuffle. And now in that on that group, let's add some let's see what else we can put. Let's put maybe a a a, a limiter. So let's do it, let's go again with the fab limiter. Limiter. Big up T, man. T for showing me a couple of bits on this fab, man. This is a good little...
bit of distortion. Camel fat. Let's have a listen. Good plug in this one. That's mad. Right, you hear that, yeah? That sounds pretty cool. Probably would sound pretty cool on the um, on the bass drum. So maybe put that over here a minute. Let's see. Not there, sorry. What am I doing? We want the camel fat. Let's put that on there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds on the snare. Nah. Let's put let's put a different one, copy and paste a different one on the snare now. Let's see what we've got with that. Uh, let's see, drum crush. to see what that sounds like. Right. this is this is really kind of raw right now yeah but let's see what happens let's get let's get a little uh amen phrase going over the top of that let's just see just a ponting around say look let's just see you never know just dabbling about and um let me see so breaks go to my break see this is where you save your breaks for a rainy day when you when you're scratching your head now go to here and you go breaks right and you go phrase so let's see what i've got phrased up here so i've got name and original phrase let's see what that will sound like over the top of that all right chuck that over there and turn on the escape right we've got hella distortion coat going on here so let's watch that let's kind of tame that down a bit I kind of like that symbol. Yeah, nice. Look, we got a little technical tick going on there. More compression, more compression. Get that symbol going. All right, let's bring out that symbol now. So what we got? Uh, let's get the Q Pro 2Q, Q 2Q, Pro 2Q, Pro Q 2. Right, let's see if we can bring it out. Now, most of the sheen of a break, yeah, is in the 10K area, right? That's the high end, like the, not... There's a savage area around about the 5k will hurt your ears, but you there's a nice little like air to the break on 10k. Yeah, check this out, right? Limit up. Little jam there, little jam. Let's get a little bass sound now. Me just fighting about. Uh, bass, bass, bass. Right. Good bass to go for. One of my favourites. Kick sub. Kick sub will probably do it. Let's have a look. Kick sub 2. Let's try that. 
Right, no point trying to play kicks up with my bass chair off, so it might, might not be a good idea. These headphones are not going to give me exactly what I'm after. Do a bit more EQ on the break too. <laughs> Good plug in for bass, R bass. Waves. Anyone use that? It's like a like a bit of sauce. Another interesting sound. Wow. Anyone ever use wow? Check this out. Right, let's copy that track, right? And then let's put the space over it. So we've got a little bit of noise on it, right? And we've also got a bass sound on it as well. I mean, let's get some, let's get some uh, R bass on that track as well. Take the wow off of this one. Right, so as crazy as that sounds, I'm just going to save it and call it crazy. Forget about it, right? So we're going to call that crazy. And just forget about it. Call it up in about three or four weeks time. And hear it first person and think, well, okay, where can I, what can I do with this now? Or need to take that out. Because sometimes you get too indulged and it can be a bit overwhelming. Do you know what I mean? So... Let's have a look at the sampler, back at the sampler now. I think tomorrow we're going to start looping these breaks up in the sampler and um, sort of putting them down, putting them into key groups and finalising this second pack so that all the breaks are all key grouped up, key grouped up and then we can move on to something else. So guys, um, hope you enjoyed the video so far. Um, I'm going to um, lock off now because I've got to take my dog to the vet first thing in the morning. She's got to have a biopsy. So, yeah, it's early rise tomorrow. I hope you guys, you know, found this useful. And uh, that's it for today's video. Take care. God bless. Peace out.